Today's video is sponsored by Production Crate. Today we'll be showing you how to make this glitchy title in HitFilm Express 2017. Today's video is rated 4 stars out of 5 on the difficulty scale. So before we begin today's tutorial, I just wanted to talk about Production Crate. Production Crate is a website that has lots of effects that you can use in your films. It has visual effects and videos that you can use, as well as sound effects and music for you to download. We'll be using a number of their effects in our video today, so make sure you go over to Production Crate to get those assets. You can create a free account from which you can download all of their free assets, which there are a lot of, and with a free account you can download 5 per day. If you want to upgrade to Pro, which is, as you can see here, $39 a year, you get all kinds of footage and unlimited daily downloads, as well as the exclusive Pro content. But let's start off by just getting those assets we need. First of all, I'm just going to go to VFX Media Elements, and then down in Motion Graphics, we see you've got a bunch of different motion graphics. Just go to Elements slash Accents, and you'll notice that we've got a whole bunch of different stuff. And it's got a really nice layout. The new ones were these 30 4K motion graphics assets, which are these motion elements. Just click on this Modern Elements right here to access those. 20 of them are for pro users, but 10 of them are free. Just scroll down and go to the MoGraph Dial Spin Halfway. This is a free asset. Just click on it and then hit download, it's 4K, so just hit download and you'll get that effect. That is of course once you've logged into your account. Once you've downloaded this effect, then just go up to the top and in the search bar, just search for glitch. When you search, we're gonna get a bunch of different assets. You can use any of these that you want, but the ones that I'm going to use are Glitch Tech Transition 1 and Glitch Tech Transition 3. So just click on them and download them, both of them are free assets. We're also going to be using some sounds from Sounds Crate over here, but we'll get into that closer to the end of this tutorial. So jumping into HitFilm here, I'm just going to make sure that my workspace is compositing, because that's what I'll be doing in this video. Then just import your media by clicking the Import button. Imported here, I've got a background clip, as you can see here, as well as three of those effects. I've got the dial spin, and I've got those two glitch transitions. I'm going to split this tutorial up into three main parts, and those parts are going to be the three composite shots that we'll create. The first composite shot is going to be used to just put the text together with the dial spin. The second one is going to be creating the glitch on the text, and then the third is going to be putting everything together. So start off by creating your first composite shot, just hit New, Composite Shot. I've got mine 1080p at 30 frames per second. Just leave it 30 seconds, and you can rename it if you want, but I'm just going to leave it as Composite Shot 1. Just hit OK to create that Composite Shot. First thing I'm going to do is to create my text. So I'm going to go New Layer, Text. I'm going to set the size to be 1920 by 1080 Just hit OK, go to the Text tool, click in the box, and then type my text. And then I'll highlight my text and edit it in the Text panel. Once I've done that, make sure I'm on the Normal tool again. I'm just going to drag in that halfway dial spin above my text. And now it's time to create the second composite shot. So just go New, Composite Shot, and then just leave it all the same, and I'm just going to name this one again Composite Shot 2. Just hit OK. Now I'm going to drag my footage in, like so. And on top of that, I'm just going to drag the Composite Shot 1 with our text and our effect on it. I'm just going to quickly move this to somewhere later in the video so that the effect doesn't start immediately. Once that is all complete, now it's time to create our glitch effect. So, go to Effects, and then just search for the Levels Histogram. Drag that onto your composite shot, like so. Once you've got it on, go to your Controls, open up your Levels Histogram, then in the Channels, just go to the Red Channel. In the Output White, just drag the slider all the way down, and this will remove any trace of red from our video. Then just go down to the next one, we can do green, and then in the output white, just remove all green. And that'll make it completely blue. Now select the layer and press Ctrl D on your PC or Command D on my Mac, and we'll duplicate the layer. On the layer above, now I can just right click and reset the levels histogram. I will similarly remove all the red from our video, 
but this time I will remove all the blue from our video as well. And now it's completely green. I'll just repeat the process, select and duplicate that layer, open up the levels histogram, right click, reset, and now I'm going to remove green, and I'm going to remove blue. The top layer is completely red. If you want to, you can rename each of these layers depending on what color they are. Now to get this back to the original, you can just select all of these by command clicking on them or shift clicking on them to select all of them. Then just right click on them and then up to the blend mode, just select the blend mode to be add. And now they'll all add back up to each other. If we scroll through our video like so, you'll notice that all of the other colors become more white as well, but that's fine. That's the look we're going for anyway. Now comes the interesting bit. Because we've got this text separated into all of its different color channels, we can move them around and things differently and independent to another. And that way it kind of creates a glitchy look. So if I just select the red layer and just move it for you, you can see it kind of creates this chromatic aberration and glitch effect but we want to do it a bit more randomly than just moving one layer. So I'm just going to go Command Z or Control Z on PC to undo that. And then I'm just going to grab the shake effect and drag it onto the top layer. I'm just going to leave the amount of shake at 30, but then I'm going to increase the speed to two. That way it's just a bit faster. Now just select the effect, press Command C or Control C, and then select those effects, the other two layers, and paste them using Command V or Control V. You'll notice now, however, that they all shake in the same way. So just go to the second shake layer, for example, and then just drag the seed around until we get something random. And do the same for the blue layer as well. That looks much better now. It's more of a glitchy, constant effect. And now we have this constant glitching out effect on our text. So that's the second part of the tutorial done, but of course we are nowhere near done. We are just coming in time for the most time consuming bit of the entire tutorial and that's doing the final step, which is putting it all together. So first of all I'm just going to save my project, always a good idea, and now I'm just going to create a new composite shot. Going back into the media panel, new, composite shot, composite shot 3, I'll leave everything the same and just hit OK again. The first thing you're going to need to do in this composite shot is drag your composite shot 2 into the timeline. Once you've dragged your composite shot 2 in, I forgot to mention actually that you see my text doesn't end. So in composite shot 1, just go to the point where the effect ends, this production create effect ends, and just shorten your text so that it stops around that point as well. So back in composite shot 3, just go to around the point where your text starts and then just drag in your first glitch effect. So the glitch effect I'm going to use as the actual transition is the glitch one effect. The second one I'll use a bit differently, as I'll show you a bit later. I'll zoom into the timeline so we can see what's going on a little bit easier. My text starts at exactly eight seconds. So I'm just going to drag this until we get a frame which is really heavy like this. This is almost completely covering the frame. So I'm going to move this frame over to eight seconds. The reason why is because the frame before, there's no text. In this frame, there's text, but it's being covered, and that provides for a smooth transition. I'm going to rename this one Glitch Transition 1. This will become handy because we'll use this naming later. Go into the Layer Properties, and I'm going to set it to be Overlay, but you can set it to be something like Add or Screen as well. I just want it to be Overlay so that it's not quite so harsh. Next zoom out. I'm just going to select this clip and press Command C to copy that. And then I'm going to go to the point where the text ends. So roughly around here. I'll zoom back in again and I'll paste the transition on. So I'm just going to rename this second one Glitch Transition 2. And just because it makes easier sense in my mind, I'll just drag it below. So similarly, I will go to the point where the text disappears and just drag the heaviest glitch effect on. Usually you wouldn't want to use the same piece of stock footage twice in your video, but I think with this glitch effect, it's pretty fast and pretty erratic anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. So, now you've got the two glitch transitions, but there's more to just the glitch transition than the actual piece of footage. 
I'm going to search up for the displacement effect and just drag that onto the composite shot too, the background clip. Under displacement, select the source layer to be either one of the transitions. I'll just select the second transition for the time being. And then in the horizontal displacement, I'll just make it really big, something like 200. And I'll do the same in the vertical. Displacement works by displacing or pretty much moving the pixels in the bottom layer depending on whether there are pixels in the top layer. So if we show and hide the displacement, you'll notice that wherever there's a glitch effect on the top layer, it'll actually move the layer below it, and that'll make it really glitchy. So we've only done the second one. I'm just going to duplicate this layer, Command-D or Control-D, and then just set one of these to be Glitch Transition 1. The next step is to add some really cool effects to this middle part here where the text is. So just go to the place where the text starts, and then at this point in the video, just grab the slice tool and slice the bottom clip. Then go to the place where the text ends. It's the same frame where you chose that massive glitch to be. Here, and I'm just going to slice the video there as well. Now we've got this middle composite shot, which is where the text is and these two composite shots either side of it. So let's start adding some cool effects to this middle part. First thing I'm going to do is to make it look more glitchy. So to do that, I'm just going to grab that other glitch effect, which is this glitch transition 3, and drag it above everything. It doesn't matter where you place it, you can place it below everything if you want. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be hiding this layer anyway. But once you've got this layer, you'll notice it's 720p, so just scale it up until it fills the frame. Once you've got all of that sorted, you can then use the Rate Stretch tool, because you'll see that the transition only lasts up until this point, after that it stops. So just grab the Rate Stretch tool here, and just stretch it out, drag it out, until the end here. The next step is to go and hide this layer, and then search up for the displacement effect, and this time just apply it to that middle layer. In this displacement effect, with the source layer now needs to be that top glitch transition. You can customize the horizontal and vertical displacement to your liking. However, I've noticed that something of around 50 works pretty well. You'll notice that now the video looks glitchy even though there's no actual physical glitch transition right on top of it. The next step is to just add some shake to this layer. You can leave the amount as 30, but I'm just going to increase the speed to something like 3. This is how we create that kind of zoom effect. So to do this, just grab the Action Cam Lens Distort effect, and just drag it on after all of those shake and displacement effects. You'll notice that when we change the field of view, it kind of goes in the wrong way. We want it to kind of push back, so just hit Reverse. But now you'll notice we get these transparent areas. So to fix this, select the Scale Anchor to be Height. It's time to start keyframing this effect. So I'm just going to go to the very beginning of this video, and select a keyframe for it to be 0. Then I'm going to go to the end, where it stops, and I'm just going to move the position to create another keyframe, and then move it back down to zero again, to reset that keyframe to zero. And now halfway, I'm just going to set a keyframe for the field of view to be 90. But the keyframes are constant, so just hit the value graph here. You'll notice that the value goes straight from zero to 90 to back to zero. I want it to be smoother, so I'm just going to highlight all of these keyframes and just hit Manual Bezier. I'm just going to drag this one up, this guy up as well, and then this guy out, and this guy out. And that'll hopefully mimic the kind of interpolation that's been going on with the movement in this dial spin. It looks pretty good, but the effect isn't quite pronounced enough. So, I'm just going to select the effect and duplicate it, and now we get a second effect. One of the final effects I'm going to apply is now just a zoom blur, I'm actually just going to straight up apply a zoom blur, not really going to change any of the settings. Next, and this is an optional one, a light flare. So just search up for light flares, and just drag it onto this video. Now I want this light flare to be part of the rest of the video, like as part of the text. So I'm just going to drag it before all of our displacement, our shake, and our distortion effects. I'm just going to open it up and set the hotspot to position to be 0, 0, which means right in the center of the frame. I'm going to change the flare type to be, say, Anamorphic Enterprise, and I'm just going to adjust the scale and the intensity to a place I see fit.
So that's all of the visuals done, I think. Now it's just time to layer some sounds from Soundscrate. I should warn you here that I am not some kind of professional sound designer, in fact I'm much better at visuals than I am with sound design, but I'm just going to do some simple sound effects. I'm just going to go to SFX and then going to Sci-Fi because there are a lot of good things in the Sci-Fi section. One of the effects that I'm going to use is this Power Down 2. It's a really nice effect and it's got this kind of glitchy thing at the end so it looks pretty good. I'm also going to scroll down and use this underwater bubble. It's got this really nice bubbly hit that I really like, so I'm going to use that as well. And then in the sound effects, I'm just going to go to movement and get one of these whooshes, just so I can add some movement, say at the end of it as it comes out. And then you can also add these glitch effects. So if I just search up for glitch in Sounds Crate, you'll notice that we have loads of these pro glitch sounds. Unfortunately, if you don't have a pro account, you won't be able to download these. But if you do have a pro account, then these will be really cool. You can use these at the beginning and the end with those transitions. Either way, let's jump back into HitFilm to use these sound effects. So I think the first thing I'm going to add is this underwater bubble. I'm just going to drag this in underneath everything so we can see where our sound effects are. Next, I'm going to grab this Power Down 2 effect. Now you'll notice it's a bit long, so I'll just right click and hit speed slash duration and just hit 200%. Now this will actually raise the pitch of the effect as well. If you want to, you can grab the pitch effect from the effects panel just to lower that pitch back down again, but I'm fine with the higher pitch. Those effects sound great, but it finishes kind of suddenly, so I'm going to grab that whoosh and just drag it at the end. It's a good whoosh, except it's a bit loud, so I'm just going to go into the audio properties and then lower the level. And that is the final effect. Of course, go check out Production Crate. They've also got some great hit film tutorials as well as other programs as well. And they have a monthly contest, which ends in about a week or so from now. And the prize is really big this month, so I suggest you put something together to enter. With all of that being said, though, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to leave a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe if you want more content just like this. And of course, I will see you in the next video. Stay shiny. Bye.